Good morning. Welcome to Coffee with Pastor. This is Friday morning of February the 3rd of 2023. This is Coffee with Pastor, and I have my cup of coffee right here, and nice and hot. Actually, it is my second cup of coffee of the morning, and so we're glad to join you with today for Coffee with Pastor. Let's turn our attention to the bad dad joke. What do you call a T-Rex that's been beaten up? What do you call a T-Rex that's been beaten up? Dino sore. Okay, we'll put that away. And by the way, just this last week, I read an article that another species of dinosaur has been explained. It wasn't a new species. It was actually a young T-Rex. And so there's one less species of dinosaurs that we have to worry about and educate our kids on. But anyway, moving on, I understand the groundhog saw his shadow. Means that there's six weeks of winter left. Um, can't go too quickly. As I understand it, if the groundhog sees his shadow, there's six weeks of winter left. If he does not, there's only 42 days. And so um, I'll let you do the math on that. But again, good morning to you. We are in Job chapter 6, and we'll ask you to please join us as we read that in just a few moments. It is going to be a wonderful day. Um, at least through the business day, I don't have to go anywhere. I can really focus my attention on my studies, and that is going to be my focus today. It is time to pray, and so we're going to lift our hearts to heaven, to the throne room of God, and ask his blessing. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence, and again, we want to say thank you for a wonderful, wonderful day. Father, we thank you that you have brought us to the end of another week. And Lord, we thank you for all that has been done, the accomplishments, Bruce finishing his radiation treatment. Father, we come into your presence and we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness to us. Lord, as we go through this day, we do pray that our eyes would be open to opportunities to minister, to be a blessing to those around us. And Lord, as we do so, we ask that you would work, that you would use your people as we share your word, your gospel. And Lord, we just pray that we would have the opportunity to literally see lives changed. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done. Thank you for this beautiful day, and Lord, to stop and think that we can take this time together to read your word. Guide us, Father. Open our eyes. Open our hearts to receive it. Help us to always understand as we read each word that this isn't men's ideas. This isn't a man's story. This is your word given to us to reveal you to us that we might know you better. Father, we pray that you would make us after the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Make us more holy. Make us more usable. And Father, we will praise you for it. Father, each one that joins us, you know their day. You know the details of their day. And Father, we lift them into your presence that you would again keep your promise, and no doubt you will, but that each one of their needs would be met. Father, that we would look to you to thank you for meeting our needs each and every day. And Father, guide us again. Help us, Lord, to pursue your will and your glory. We ask these things in Christ's wonderful and holy name. Amen. The book of Job, chapter 6. But Job answered and said, Oh, that my grief were thoroughly weighed, and my calamity laid in the balances together. For now it would be heavier than the sand of the sea. Therefore my words are swallowed up. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me, the poison whereof drinketh up my soul. The terrors of God do set themselves in array against me. 
Doth the wild ass bray when he hath grass, or loweth the ox over his fodder? Can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt, or is there any taste in the white of an egg? The things that my soul refused to touch are as my sorrowful meat. Oh, that I might have my request, and that God would grant me the thing that I long for, even that it would please God to destroy me, that he would let loose his band and cut me off. Then should I yet have comfort. Yea, I would harden myself in sorrow. Let him not spare, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should hope? And what is mine end that I should prolong my life? Is my strength the strength of stones, or is my flesh of brass? Is not my help in me, and is wisdom driven quite from me? To him that is afflicted, pity should be shown from his friend, but he forsaketh the fear of the Almighty. My brethren have dealt deceitfully as a brook, and as a stream of brooks they pass away which are blackish by reason of the ice, and wherein the snow is hid. What time they wax warm, they vanish. When it is hot, they are consumed out of their place. The paths of their way are turned aside. They go to nothing and perish. The troops of Tima looked. The companies of Sheba waited for them. They were confounded because they had hoped. They came thither and vanished. For now ye are nothing. Ye see my casting down and are afraid. Did I say bring unto me or give a reward for me of your substance? Or deliver me from the enemy's hand or redeem me from the hand of the mighty? Teach me and I will hold my tongue and cause me to understand wherein I have erred. How forcible are right words. But what doth your arguing reprove? Do ye imagine to reprove words and the speeches of one that is desperate, which are as wind? Yea, ye overwhelm the fatherless, and ye dig a pit for your friend. Now therefore, be content. Look upon me, for it is evident unto you if I lie. Return, I pray you. Let it not be iniquity. Yea, return again, my righteousness is in it. Is there iniquity in my tongue? Cannot my taste discern perverse things? And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Yesterday I had the opportunity to do some meditating on Job. And if there's one message that really ought to come out to us throughout the book, well, many messages, but one in particular, know what you are talking about. Make sure you know what you are talking about. Job's three friends came and they had all kinds of words of wisdom and words of admonition. And Listen, Job, you have to repent. You've sinned. You've done the they knew nothing about which they were talking. And I think a lot of times we as Christians, we as people, often do the same thing. We speak about things and we draw conclusions on things that we certainly do not understand. There's a lot that we do, and yes, we have the Word of God and so forth. But when we speak, make sure we know what we are talking about. Beloved, each and every day we encourage you to be faithful, and we're going to ask you to do just that. Be faithful, not to me, not to a church, not to coffee with pastor, but to be faithful to God in all things. Now, that may include being faithful to uh, your church, being faithful to its ministries, being faithful to your pastor, being faithful to coffee with pastor, being faithful to those things. That may include it. But ultimately, the issue is faithfulness to God. Beloved, be faithful. And never allow yourself 
to become an excuse by which someone else might turn away from Jesus Christ. Beloved, remember God loves you and so do we. And until tomorrow, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.